You know, Ginger has been covering the early aggressive start, but now the lull in the hurricane season as global temperatures keep rising. Climate scientists say we can anticipate fewer hurricanes, but when they do come, mm -hmm. as Ginger's been telling us, they're going to be stronger, going to be more destructive. So how can you make sure your home is hurricane ready as, as best as possible? Matt Gutman put himself and a model home into a hurricane simulator to find out. Good morning to you, Matt. Hey, good morning, Robin. I think I'm still drying out from that one. Now, hurricanes cause more property damage than any other kind of natural disaster since 1980, over a trillion dollars. We're not even halfway through this hurricane season, and we've already seen storms like Beryl and Debbie slam through communities. So this morning, we're taking a closer look at how to make a house better withstand a hurricane and how you can protect yours and your loved ones. Inside this test chamber, researchers at the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety, or IBHS, study what a hurricane can do to a house. And they built this standard model home for us, hammering it for hours with the largest hurricane simulator of its kind in the world. Shredding the siding and ripping apart the roof, the ceilings collapsing under the weight of all that water getting in. All of this to show us how to build homes that are more hurricane resistant. We have a massive wall of 105 massive powerful fans. They're able to simulate a hurricane of a Cat 3, 130 miles per hour. You can already feel the power of that wind and the rain pelting your face. Believe it or not, this isn't even at full power, and it felt shockingly real. It feels like it's needles pelting your face. You can barely see, which is why I'm wearing goggles. And the amount of moisture coming down is absolutely enormous. You get soaked in seconds from this. So what they're doing is actually rotating the house like a carousel to try to better simulate a real-life hurricane in which the winds are not just blowing rain and moisture, but they're also constantly shifting. We crank it up to 75 miles per hour. This is about what a Category 1 hurricane feels like. That's the most powerful winds they'll allow me to endure, and it's painful. Inside the house? The ceiling has collapsed. The water is raining right into the house. I can see straight into the attic, and I spot one of the most common ways that water gets in. You see that daylight through the gaps? Those are gaps in the roof deck, the bottommost layer of your roof, usually protected from rain by shingles. But of course, those are long gone. These gaps are required to be there because this material needs to be able to expand and contract. Fred Malik offers me a crash course in Roofing 101, a crude water bottle test showing how easily water can get in. About 60% of this is going to make it inside your house. He says the next time you replace your roof, typically every 10 to 15 years, seal the roof deck. Part of that could involve using this special tape called flashing tape. No water getting in there. To highlight another area to strengthen, we pause the machine and rotate the house so the garage door is now facing the wind. Within seconds of turning it back on, it crumbles. The wind now rushing in and the vacuum compromising the integrity of the entire house, essentially turning it into a giant balloon, the pressure building up from the inside. And as we crank the wind up to 125 miles an hour, a category three storm, it eventually pops. Paneling and decking on the roof here just shot outward. Air has to go somewhere, so it's gonna go to the sides and it's gonna go up. It's gonna find a weak point because your house isn't designed to resist the wind once it gets inside. One way to help keep that wind out, a wind-rated garage door. IBHS tested one and while it did eventually fail, it lasted more than an hour, not seconds. That difference could be critical. If wind does get in through a busted garage door or even a window, the key is to contain it. Experts say during a hurricane, keep all interior doors closed. It'll help keep the potential damage to just that area. Speaking of windows, they're also extremely vulnerable. This two by four cannon simulating debris that can get torpedoed in a storm. Piercing not just the window, but impaling the bed, the wall, even the couch on the other side. Which is why it is so important to stay away from windows and exterior walls. I mean, I, that could be deadly.
And ahead of a hurricane, bring inside anything that could become a projectile. You want to fold up the lawn chairs, bring them inside. Anything like a grill, children's toys, bicycles, trampolines. I mean, you saw what that two by four could do. That was intense and very, very scary. And it's one of the reasons that many people get impact resistant windows. That and other home upgrades we looked at are part of IBHS's fortified standard, basically an above and beyond building standard if you really want to make your home hurricane ready. The upgrades can cost a bit more, but they could also save you money and a lot of headaches in the long run since even an inch of water that's this much can cause up to $25,000 in damage. And you can always find more tips and resources on the IBHS website guys can also save your life yes mm -hmm. which is most so important. important yeah and you know matt and i are out there we see this so we see homes that do very well and then you see ones that don't so huge huge tips i'm so glad you're doing this story and i think this is really counterintuitive when you were reading earlier and you said we're going to have fewer hurricanes mm -hmm. because as the t atmosphere warms it's not just going to warm at the bottom it's going to warm at the top and so you don't have that difference in temperature that starts the thunderstorm that starts a hurricane so we expect fewer but when they do pop through they're going to be more severe and so matt you and i were talking when i knew you were doing this and i said but let's not forget about trees because trees even in a tropical storm like debbie we saw deaths where trees just fall onto homes it's one of the most common and most frequent causes of death in these storms and uh, that is another survival tip. You're going to want to have professionals check out those trees, remove any dead or dying ones, anything that is too close to your home that could come down on your home. And lastly, of course, heed evacuation orders. You can always replace lives, as Ginger just said. Uh, but yeah, can't save your life. You yeah. got our attention with this one. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Mm -hmm. Great job, Matt. Wow. Thank you. Really appreciate you putting yourself in the middle of that for mm -hmm. us. So thank Thanks. you.